Joining us now, Fox News contributor Steve Cortez and Katrina Person, former Trump national spokesperson. Steve, are you buying, first of all, are you buying the unity call? You know, I am. I think it's temporary. I will tell you this. I've been very harshly critical of Senate Republicans, all of them, really, uh, but particularly the leadership on your show and other shows, because, frankly, they failed. And if this were a business, if government were a business and this were the Senate, this CEO would be fired uh, for his inability to get things done so far. But all that said, I don't think this is the time to be super harsh and critical. And I think the president, in a very presidential way, knows that for the coming weeks, uh, there should be a detente, there should be a cooling, because we have to get taxes done for the American people. Katrina, what about Senators Flake, Senator McCain, Senator Collins? Do you think they're won over to the cause of tax cutting by this uh, unity meeting yesterday? I don't, but I think they should, Stuart. And the reason is, you know, following President Trump's leadership and, and trying to come together in good faith to work this out together is the right thing to do. And I think that they know their voters believe it is the right thing to do, particularly when you're talking about something that is in the Republican platform with regards to taxes and helping out families, something that the president ran on, something that many of them ran on and won, and specifically turning blue states red. And they have to take notice of that. So now if they're going to get it done, it needs to get done. I think people yeah. are tired of the lip service. Yeah. And I think the president is really waiting on now for them to get their act together. But if you don't have Republicans in the Senate on board, you don't have 50 votes to pass it, and you're going to have to go with 60. You're going to have to have help from the Democrats. I'll get to that in a second. But first of all, I want to break down this $4,000, the tax plan, which we are told would put $4,000 into the pockets of working families. $4,000. Well, a lot of questions about the math. I wish I could say yes, X minus Y equals whatever. But <laughs> basically, it's, it's what you believe the impact of corporate taxes have on workers' wages and their ultimate income. Okay. Treasury Secretary Mnuchin will say 70% of workers' pay is affected by the amount of corporate tax their employer pays. Others say, including the CBO, it's closer to 25 cents. In other words, the bottom line is that $4,000 per average household will increase if you drop the corporate tax rate down to 20 percent, maybe just a little optimistic. It's a number that's floating around out there, although the math is just a little fuzzy. However, there's no guarantee that the company that gets that cheaper corporate rate is going to invest uh, in buying more, you know, buying, you know, expanding the business and hiring more people. What if they just raise dividends and go to automation? Lots of questions about the math on this particular issue. But Steve Cortez, isn't the White House using uh, experience of, of all right. countries around the world which have a high corporate tax rate and a slow rate of growth for workers' wages versus a low corporate tax rate and a high rate of growth for wages. Is that, does that work for you? Mm. Sure, yes. You know, and I think, if anything, the White House maybe is being too cautious. Uh, it's not optimistic enough about what this tax plan can do for the American worker. And by the way, the American worker needs this so badly because this slow economic recovery that we've had for the last decade has been wonderful for the high end, but it's been slow to no recovery mm. for working class Americans. And by the way, those are the people who put President Trump over the finish line in 2016. It was Midwestern blue collar workers. It's time now to deliver growth to them in wages. They need it very badly. And on top of that, simplification. Our tax system is such an albatross upon Americans' lives, upon businesses. It's so complex. It hasn't been reformed mm -hmm. since 1986. I mean, Stuart, I was in grade school then, sleeping in a bunk bed with my brother. I didn't have a driver's license yet. Uh, Imagine it. It's been that long since we've had tax reform. We, it, it's a must-do. I hate to tell you what I was doing in 1986. <laughs> not only that. It wasn't but sleeping in a bunk bed. I, mean, I did have a driver's license. Okay, <laughs> Katrina, go ahead. But, Stuart, this is, this is just one piece of a much greater puzzle that we're talking about. Of course, if you give businesses the opportunity to invest in themselves, they will. Of course, if you give businesses the opportunity to bring in trillions of dollars, that's what this is. This is incentives and investment. It works. That's growth. That's going to trickle down into wages. That's just the way that it works. It's common sense. We should be doing this. We should have been doing this a very long time ago. Don't this say trickle down. Is committed to just no. that. The, the expression <laughs> trickle down has a very unfortunate history in this country. Right. But you think it, you think it happens. It does. But I, I think what will definitely happen is you bring that money back to this country, companies will invest. These are companies that are in it for profits. And if you want to raise wages as profits go up, you have to give those companies the opportunity to do that. You've seen that already with uh, getting rid of some of the burdensome regulations. You've seen that with the, the stock market that's just waiting on this type of plan to be passed. 
this president has a goal, and it is to help the people, and that's what we're going to do. Okay, now, at the top of the hour, my editorial is called My Take. I, I took the mainstream media to task, the elites. I think they are as contemptuous as ever against President Trump. I see no difference, no change here. But I also noticed, Katrina, I noticed that Senator Durbin is in a local radio interview. He says, hey, watch out. President Trump could win a second term in 2020 because we're overdoing it on the liberal side. I, I'm not so sure that the Democrats are going to take his advice there and not keep on overdoing it. Well, this is what we call uh, in, in Trump campaign world uh, PTSD of politics. This is post-Trump derangement syndrome. They've absolutely overdone it. Uh, this president can't win no matter how great he's been. The people are going to see that effect in their pocketbook. They're going to see it in the economy. They're going to see it in their communities even because this president is committed to making America great again. He's doing everything that he can to work across the aisle. He's working in good faith with the establishment up to this point. And I do think you're going to see a lot of that impact the communities as well as those representatives who want to see this type of change. They've absolutely overdone it. They need to start giving him credit where credit is due because it's going to backfire on them. Uh, Steve, um... I just, whilst I was away, I made a point of watching the establishment media. I just didn't mm -hmm. see the stock market or the economy reported right. on that much. Did you? I mean, right. did you? Am I missing something? No, Stuart. It's, beca it's because they're lost in a New York, Washington media bubble. Uh, they don't realize that between Brooklyn and Brentwood is a gigantic country. And by the way, a country that's starting to feel good again. Uh, it's not just the stock market. That's fantastic. It's also consumer confidence. It's manufacturing indices. Investment is starting to happen. Belief. Regulatory relief. So there's great things going on in the country. There's an optimism that is palpable. If we throw tax cuts into that mix and we are going to soar in 2018, and that will drive the mainstream media nuts. And I have to say, even though it, of course it bothers me when I watch them and their dishonesty, uh, their lack of journalistic uh, uh, standards, but I will say this too, part of me likes it because I think in 2016, they unwittingly helped us. I think, you know, to Katrina's point, it actually drove voters that. into our camp because they saw how insanely unfair the mainstream media was to Trump. And it actually made them, to some degree, uh, uh, more open to Trump's message. And perhaps they're going to continue to do that. But wait a second, whilst we've got both of you on the screen, Katrina and Steve, Will you both admit to shouting at the TV when you're watching mainstream media, <laughs> just like me? <laughs> and maybe throwing yes. things. <laughs> shouting and throwing things oh, and saying right. things we can't say on television. I don't throw anything. <laughs> and I, with the grandchildren around, I try to avoid nasty language. <laughs> Katrina, Steve, <laughs> both of you, thank you very much for being with us. Good stuff today. Thank, thank you. Thank you.